Hey, good morning to all. This is Pete and Dork Center with you on this Sunday. It is September 24, 2023. Glad you could join us. Amen. We took a little break last week and gave you something pre-recorded uh, across the other channels that we use here. Uh, but right now we are live today. I think we're live. Okay, thank God. <laughs> Thank God that tropical storm didn't stay a tropical storm for too long. Amen. Praise God. We're Cornerstone Assembly Independent Pentecostal right here in Cambridge, Maryland. And we meet at a church called The River at 415 Academy Street in Cambridge. And we're also missing the ministries. When we meet at that church called The River, we're not affiliated with that church. We just rent from them. We rent usually sanctuary number two. Sometimes we're in the main sanctuary. And so we meet there every Sunday night at 7 p.m. and every Thursday night at 7 p.m. And uh, this Thursday, God willing, we will continue our study in perpendicular truth. Unless something comes up, we'll have to see. But right now, what's coming up is God's Word. Amen. I always love God's Word. When I first got to say, whoa, the Word of God came alive to me all of a sudden. Didn't understand much, and Revelation scared me to no end. Uh, but when I got saved, ooh, it lit up, and it lights up even more as time goes on. Amen? Ooh, it's getting brighter all the time. Praise God. Amen. So we want to go to Matthew, and a lot of people like the Gospels, and we're at Matthew 6 this morning. We're gonna reflect, we'll eventually look at the whole thing. We're not going to read the whole chapter, because uh, we wouldn't have time to do that necessarily. <laughs> but the thing is, we want to go to Matthew, and we want to talk about you need to pick the best. You and I need to pick the best. And by the way, let me talk about that, uh, the uh, thing I had up here before, the uh, the title page. And let me just cut to that now. As you see, I could have done better. I could have just used the flowers and got rid of that stuff in the gutter, basically. But I, the Lord said, me, leave it like that. And that's a shot from Ray Street some years back. And uh, so people, a lot of times, they like to just stay in the gutter. <laughs> But God wants us to pick the best, really pick his best. The best for us is his best. It's his best. And so that's the way we want to go. All right, let's get back on camera here now. Okay. All right, there we are. Praise God. All right, but I want to show you that. I could have just knocked out that gutter and that's it and make it look prettier uh, and all. But I thought, no, I, I, a lot of times when I do these pictures, there is some type of illustration behind it. And it may not look the nicest uh, and all. But there's some things I want to bring out and just show you just by that picture what the, what's, this is all about. We do want to pick God's best if we're saved, especially. If you're unsaved, you still should want to pick God's best. But it all begins with picking his best for the entire world, which is Jesus Christ. you got to make him your king, your savior, your lord, the boss to your life. And when we say lord in church, make Jesus Christ your lord, we're talking about making him the king of your life, not just at that moment when you pray, but for every moment of your life. Amen. So uh, keep that in mind. Now we're going to go to Matthew here, chapter 6, and I hope I got my uh, army straight here. Basically, keep in mind, I just do this and all by myself. This is not uh, what First Free Will Baptist Church. In fact, let me just knock some of these things down here. And uh, they have some great video uh, when they do their broadcasts. And they do them quite often, don't they? You know? yes. And so I, I don't know. They must have someone in that church that works for a TV station. They most certainly know what they're doing. And so we want to go over now to the scripture we have for you. We're going to start in Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Go down to verse 34. And uh, let me bring that up on the screen for you once again. Because of copyright issues and stuff like that. I'm going to be reading from the American King James. That's what you will see on your screen. And then Sister Dorcas will be reading from the New King James. So here we go. Uh, I had the odd verses because I am odd. <laughs> All right. All right. And you'll hear me say this from the New, uh, from the American King James. Uh, and, All right. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth. Well, I'm reading from the, okay. Let me go back to that page. I'm reading it from New King James. Okay. Lay not up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and dust, moth and rust does corrupt and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, 
your whole body will be full of light. And what that means, what are, your fo what are you focused upon? Okay, so that's what that means. Okay, well, when I was first saying that, I thought, what is he talking about? But it boils down to this, what are you focused upon? So therefore, if your eye be evil, if you're looking at stuff that God does not approve of, then lo and behold, your whole body shall be full of darkness. Amen. So if therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? 24. <laughs> no one can serve two masters, for either he will have he will hate the one, love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve two God, serve God and Mammon. There you go. And Mammon means riches, wealth, and so on. So it's not it doesn't necessarily have to be money, but you can have a lot of goods and all. Now I'm going to scroll this get down for your benefit, all right, and for my benefit too. All right, 25, which really begins a new paragraph in the Greek, as you see. Therefore, I say to you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more value than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to a statue? To stature. So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. Ne they neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, Will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Let's scroll down some more. And then uh, here we go. Okay, so 31. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or whether with all shall we be clothed? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Oh wow, those last two verses are so great, so powerful. And I remember when I was first saved that uh, I would often hear from older Christians, and it would be an exhortation to us young people, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Excuse me. <clears throat> and then this other one, too, I, this is, I love this because this is so true. Look, don't worry about tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Today has enough problems to it. There you go. It's not saying that you shouldn't do a little planning about your bills and basically and all that, but don't worry about it. Don't focus upon tomorrow because you don't know what's going to happen. Amen. Now, we want to go back to our text, and once again, we have some pretty colors for you. <laughs> but later on, we're going to roll back up, and we'll have the whole chapter here <laughs> from Matthew chapter 6. But you have on your screen before you, we, we have uh, colored gray, verse 19 looks gray or should be looking gray and over we get to verse 20 is sky blue as you can see why uh, and then number 21 it's in yellow and so the first part we want to talk about if you look on the uh, your right hand your screen we're going to see about picking the best pick the best and first of all you don't pick what this what is earthly do, do not pick earthliness, okay? Because you will be disappointed after a while. And every now and then, God will give me a reminder along that line because you know, it's, I like, you know, new stuff, basically, don't you? I mean, it, you know, I mean, I'll take the old stuff. But I remember one time when we were in Flintstone, somehow we bought a Pontiac Phoenix, real nice looking car, V6. And I really liked it and all. And uh, they said it's willow green, but it looked yellow to me. <laughs> but it was a Pontiac Phoenix, and uh, so uh, bought that, and then uh, you know up in Flintstone there, it's all mountainous, mountainous and all, and it was winter time, and we got stuck on the side of the road. You know, stuff happens because you didn't make the curve right, and you didn't go fast enough, or things like that happen. And also, we someone came by to help us, and they meant well, but <laughs> they came by with this this little tractor and all that, and he started to 
he come by and he hooked the chain up and all, and then he began coming our way. And his tractor started sliding into the nose of the car. There goes the pretty <laughs> Pontiac Phoenix. <laughs> the nose got cracked and all that. Well, yeah, see, all these things on Earth, no matter what you and I get, it's going to pass away. In fact, uh, we don't pass away, though, if we're saved. Uh, basically, the, the, the thought of us will pass away if we're not saved. Now, everyone lives forever. and uh, But when, for those that don't know Christ the Savior, are you going to remember Michael Jackson, you know, 5,000 years from now, even if you're in hell? You won't be bothered by who, you know, who Michael Jackson was. You're in hell. And then if you are saved or you're born again and you get to be with the Lord forever in his kingdom and all, you won't, you won't be thinking about Michael Jackson Amen. <laughs> or anybody else, okay? Uh, now, we will probably know each other at least during the first thousand years when Christ comes back. How do I know that? If we're saved and all and we're raised from the dead, we will know each other. How do I know that? Because on the Mount of Transfiguration, or let's put it this way, when Christ was transfigured, uh, even the disciples that were with him, they figured out who Moses was and who Elijah was. And Moses and Elijah were not wearing name tags. So <laughs> they, they, uh, they, they figured that out. So, uh, and also you'd be able to know. And also, it's going to be amazing. One of these, I would love to, to talk about the millennial reign, but we have to prepare for it. Okay? So that's why we're doing this, uh, these other messages and all. But I used to wonder, but why do we have to have another thousand years on earth? There's a purpose behind it and all. And uh, and yes, we'll still be working for the Lord. I don't want to work. Then you're, not, you're probably not saved. You, if, if you get saved, you'll want to serve God. Somehow, so, some way, even if you're flat on your back, even though you're top bone tired, still you'll have this level of, I want to do something for the Lord. Of course, if, if you are flat on your back, you can always pray and worship. Worship, but I would say put that first because that will lift your spirits up as you worship the Lord. And then you can pray and intercede and so on. But uh, the first thing that we want to look at is that we need to stop picking that which is earthly, you know, jewelry and stuff like that, and tattoos and all this sort of stuff. See, the Word of God says in uh, verse 19 there, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. So let's talk about rust for one thing. There is a scanner I had here, a Bearcat scanner. I forget when I got that. What? It was years ago. About 45 years ago, right? And all. And it's quit working probably because of the metal pieces in inside where you press the buttons and all that. They're probably corroded by now, unless I can get in there and clean it. But I, I can't program it anymore. But it's not a nice scanner. And I'll be see it's got if it, talk about thieves. <laughs> I welcome to Cambridge. I don't mean to put Cambridge down, but this is the absolute truth. When we moved to Cambridge, right? Uh, we left some stuff on the porch while we went back and got some other things. And one of the things that we left on our porch was a bicycle. And when we came back, it was gone. We were hoping that, you know, you could just trust the neighborhood. No way. No way. Okay. And so you have thieves and you have uh, rust and, of course, dust. We'll throw that in there. I said dust before by mistake. But you have uh, the moth and all. Uh, you got thieves and all. And so, look, all these things... Are, it can be consumed, destroyed, uh, depreciated. Uh, they're prone to be corroded. All sorts of things. There's depletion and all that. And like we said, once again, there's theft. Now, all this stuff is going to pass away. In fact, the actual planet that we're on is going to melt with fervent heat. We don't have that scripture for you, this one, but we do have this other one because this should speak to anyone's heart. And uh, if you listen, thing is you got to listen to it and it is over in first john chapter 2 verses 15 to 17. do not love the world or the things of the in the world if anyone loves the world the love of the father is not in him for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world and the world is passing away and the lust of it but he who does the will of god abides forever amen you see that last part? If you want to abide forever, 
and in, in the memory of others, basically, you can put it this way too. You, you, in fact, it will be more the memory. They'll know who you are. If you want to buy it forever, then do the will of God. Step one is if you don't have Christ as your Savior, step one is to make him your Savior and boss of your life, King. Really, you start, start basically, you know, uh, with those two. And yeah, Lord, save me. And of course, that's what I prayed and I got saved. Uh, Lord, come into my heart. And then this thing about, Lord, I didn't catch on. Well, Lord means boss. He is to be the master of your life. He is to be the boss of your life, the king of your life. Not just the moment you prayed, and not just in church on Sundays or Wednesday nights or Thursday nights, or when you're in public or people are watching you. He's to be the boss all of the time. So you got to bear that in mind, too. Now, so these things of the world, uh, you know, they're going to pass away. I'm going to say this. I feel prompted by God to say this. And I, why do I say that, even say that? Because I want Christians to realize that you need to listen to God's Holy Spirit. I'm not lifting myself up. I'm trying to lift some people up out there that think, oh, you know, you know God, he'll, he'll, he'll let me know. You need to pay, pay attention more to what he's saying to you. And so here's something here that during the time that there was COVID ravaging the world, you know, the church buildings that people had, a lot of them were empty. I think God was trying to say something. Yeah. And people need to listen. I could talk more about that at all. Uh, what was the right thing to do? Uh, if you were to ask me during the times of COVID, I told someone this. It's like there's a passage uh, over in the Old Testament, of course, it doesn't really apply to anything super spiritual, but every man to his tent. Now, what you listen to what God tells you to do. So I didn't slam the preacher that said, okay, we're going to have church anyhow. And I didn't slam the preacher that said, we're going to shut the doors and stay home. I didn't do either one because I figured each person has got to hear from God. And of course, we kept our services going because over in the state of Maryland here, uh, the uh, the rule was you may meet if you together if you have 10 or less people. And of course, that's the size of Cornerstone. We're under 10 people. You're welcome to come. Yeah. So <laughs> if you live in Cambridge, whatever, or whatever, if you want to drive over here, that's fine. You're welcome to come. And all. But uh, we, we were always had under 10 people at all. And they wear masks and all that, so we did. And then we did have some people more, you know, we had about maybe at the most six, seven sometimes at this point, maybe less, I don't know, every now and then. It's not every Sunday. But the thing is, we, we, we did meet and all because that was the law uh, that we may meet uh, if we had 10. Now, we got more than 10, I would say we'll have more than one service. I might do that. So you just listen to God. But the thing is, so people focus upon church buildings and denominations and fellowships. These things are going to pass. Some, as you watch, as I see things going on, it seems like certain things are happening to fellowships and denominations that it's just, that's fading away. As if we're getting ready, the world's getting ready, at least the Christians are getting ready for the millennial reign. Of course, that's... Uh, from what I see in God's word, that's not going to happen until Christ comes back. We go and we go through great tribulation, uh, but that's what I see there. But I think that's the way things are shaping up right now. We need to get to this next part pretty soon here. But uh, let me talk, show you one thing from God's word. Oh, even in the Old Testament, before Christ ever came physically, you have people like Daniel. Yeah, and I should have wrote down the king's name. I think it was both the Shazar that he said this to, uh, almost said Nebuchadnezzar, but Nebuchadnezzar was dead by now. Uh, but this is the, the time when uh, they were assembled in the king's, you could say palace, or what you want to say, gallery, and they're having a dinner, and they bring out the the artifacts from the temple that they had captured and all that, and they got the goblets and all that and all. And then all of a sudden, here is this hand. <laughs> that starts writing on the wall. <laughs> oh. And you read that story, and really, it's something else. If you read it carefully, in the, even the King James, it indicates that the king could not hold his bowels. He sold himself. He was so scared. I mean, what would you do if you saw a hand <laughs> coming out, right on the wall? So they, they're, they're, they're in a fit there, and they call Daniel. 
And so he says to Daniel, hey, look, I will give you a bunch of rewards, stuff like that, et cetera, et cetera, if you will read this to us and interpret it. And then Daniel says in 517, let your gifts be for yourself and give your rewards to another. Yet I will read the writing for the king or to the king and make known to him the interpretation. And why that, by the way, that's a good attitude to have. You know, he still respected the king. But once again, you see that Daniel wanted no part of, you know, or I'm going to give you uh, this gold necklace and all this sort of stuff and all. I think they still gave it to him. But, you know, what, you know, Daniel's like, what's the use? Your kingdom's gone. <laughs> when the, the Medes and the Persians come in here, they're going to have this, what I got, you know, if you give it to me. doesn't matter. But even, if, even if the Medes and Persians didn't come in, Daniel would have said the same thing. But in this case, they were coming in that very night. Uh, the kingdom of Babylon fell to media Persia and uh, wow that was something else now look on your screen and we need to go back to our text also as we do this and on your screen we go to the next part we're going to spend some time on this because we're going to go through Matthew chapter 6 and also touch upon Matthew chapter 5 but uh, you don't want to pick earthliness you want to pick excellence Excellence. Now that's in Sky Blue, verse 20. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. All right, treasure in heaven where nothing earthly can touch it. And then uh, in some respects, reward the rewards that we get from the lord can be called treasure now don't get this mixed up with salvation salvation is a gift of god yes that is a treasure but it's not necessary reward okay <laughs> you know because we didn't did nothing to get it and to earn it but when we are saved when we do things for the lord in the lord then there are rewards waiting for us and we have treasures too now, we're going to scroll this up for you. And uh, we're going to talk about some things in Matthew. And uh, let me scroll that up for you here. And here we go. All right. There we go. As you see, it's American King James. All right. Now, we're not going to read all this, okay? But it's up there for reference on your part as I go along in Matthew chapter 6. And, of course, some ways in which we can get a reward is by charitable deeds. Now, you just don't do a charitable deed to get the reward. You do it because you love the Lord and because God instructed you to. And don't get that wrong. Just because you're walking down the streets of the city somewhere and somebody asks you for money, that doesn't mean you have to give it to them. You might say, well, Jesus said if someone asks and you give to them. Yes, but back, he was talking about people that really had a need. Today, you walk down the streets of Cambridge or Baltimore, places like that, or even somewhere you go a shop mall, whatever, and someone asks you for money, about 95% of the time, they will take your money if you give it to them and buy alcohol or buy dr drugs and all. They'll save up the money. You might, you might give them a dollar, so what can they get for a dollar for drugs? But they'll ask you for a dollar, then they'll ask someone else for a dollar and all that. And it goes on. And so the thing is, you realize a Christian, even though we're supposed to be giving and loving and so on, we're not loving when we're doing that. And what we're actually giving when we give money in cases like that, we're giving these people the opportunity to keep on sinning and stay in sin. So you don't want to be doing that. And you have to be led by God's Holy Spirit. Now, I'm not saying you can't ever give, and we usually give material goods, you know, food and all that. I'm not saying you can't ever, ever give. But the thing is, be led by God's Holy Spirit. And don't let the liberal mindset try to tell you, oh, you always have got to give these people the money they ask for without judging. No, we do have to judge and we do have to evaluate and we do have to figure things out a lot of times. What does God want us to do? Let me go on, otherwise we're going to be here for a good bit of time because we got to get through Matthew chapter 6 here. All right, so charitable deeds, good works. That's Matthew 6, 1 to 4. And then let us scroll this down. Whoops, we went too far now. Okay. All right. Okay, here we go. We're into prayer now. 
Uh, and so that's the other thing. We have rewards there as we pray, and we have treasures. When you begin to pray for people and you intercede, there's treasure that's laid up in heaven for you. And it's not just souls and all. It's situations that you've asked God to bind the force of Satan and so on. Uh, many times, you know, I can think of one case right now. There is a couple that is still together because we prayed and others prayed too. But this is a well-known couple in Cambridge area or at Dorchester County. And uh, anyhow, there was a problem there and they almost got a divorce. But we kept on praying and not just us. And I say we because I want you to pray too. All right. So if I'm telling you to do something, that means we did it and all. So uh, we prayed, other people prayed, and these people are together to this day. So uh, that's the situation there with prayer. And so uh, you be led by God and you intercede for all sorts of people lost and saved is you know these this case these people claim to be saved but they're probably backslidden at this point but the thing is you intercede as directed by god's holy spirit now here's another thing too a lot of people overlook this they don't want to do this it's called forgiveness okay and i'm trying to bring this down so this isn't too choppy for you there you go verses 12 to 15. lay up treasure in heaven i'm trying to think did i skip you Oh, no, we're about, we're about ready to get to you now. Okay. All right. So forgiveness, and that's Matthew 6, 12 to 14. And there is time, there are times that we've got to learn, you know, to forgive and keep on forgiving. When I first got saved, I had to push away the idea of vengeance because, you know, I was raised not saved. And the whole family was not saved. My relatives were not saved. I was the only one. And when I got saved, I was the only one saved. <laughs> and the whole community, not the whole community, but there's people that take vengeance and all that and all. But uh, you, you learn, you know, hey, I have got to forgive. Now, in regard to vengeance, and we're going to look, going to ask you to Romans here in a minute, uh, once we bring that up on the screen for you. But in regard to vengeance, we have the following in Romans chapter 12, verses 19 to 21. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. And if he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Do not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Amen. Praise God. About that coals of fire, don't think that you're going to burn someone. No, that when Paul wrote that by the Holy Spirit, it was kind of like a societal custom back then to help people. Like if they're carrying stuff, a lot of times they're carrying things in their head at all. And so if you go to the community furnace to get some hot coals for your residence and all, you would have you know, something on your head to carry it at all. So, and, but it's kind of tedious to do that. And what happens is, is Paul saying, well, be nice and, you know, go ahead and let the guy or gal keep the thing on their head and shovel the coals on top of their head so they don't have to take the thing off and all that and get them home right away. <laughs> and that's the idea. So when you forgive, you're helping these people to come to the Lord. Now, not all will come to the Lord, but you know what? This is really powerful out in the Middle East and also in Asia. When Christians forgive, they're persecutors. Like most times it's Muslims. Sometimes it's Hindus. Sometimes it's the communists. But they wind up forgiving these people that have persecuted them. And it does have an effect on some people. Now, some people, just, you know, they think you're nuts and stuff like that. But you never know. They could be people like Paul was. And so you never, ever know. And uh, so that is the situation. But uh, the thing is, you forgive. And when you forgive, uh, you're laying up treasure in heaven, I would say, because this is the context here. How you lay up treasure in heaven, these different things and so on. When you forgive, especially someone that's unsaved uh, at all, uh, they might get saved later on. And so here you have this person that you will meet in heaven that used to be your enemy, 
And why? Because you forgave them and all. Now, let's go back to our text. Okay, I got take away Romans here. And we go back to our text. And here we go. And now I had to go there. We want to go over now to Matthew chapter 6, verses 16 to 18 in that neighborhood, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and before we go, they're talking about forgiving uh, people. By the way, God, Jesus said over Matthew 5, 43 to 48, to love, bless your enemies. That's interesting. And that includes those who persecute us. If you check that out in Matthew 5, verse 43 to 48. And, but now we get into a section here about fasting. Fasting. And a lot of things can happen when you and I fast because when you fa if it's a biblical fast, and by the way, we just had this some time back uh, as a teaching at Cornerstone. Uh, when you fast biblically, you are uh, setting aside quality time to be with the Lord. And I want to bring up a, uh, a link for you. I might have to relocate that. So uh, they go, well, hang on here. And so we'll put it up on the screen for you in a more proper place okay it's gonna appear above your texture in a minute and we just completed the there it is the study in fast of biblical fasting and there you have it on the screen if you want to listen to that whole series and uh, it's at sapphirestreams.com forward slash live forward slash fasting dot html and fasting gives you time to pray and you therefore you have more time to intercede it gets you all sorts of things. If you do it right, uh, you get more into a God. The scriptures open up and all. I could talk more about that, but listen to those recordings and all. And uh, you will develop treasure in heaven. And then we want to go back to our text here. And, uh, and let me see here. Okay. Where I placed it. Okay, down here. Right about there. We want to talk about that one more time. And you want to do this to lay up treasure in heaven. And, all, and, and, and make sure your heart is in this direction. And, and all, because this, this should be your treasure. Souls. Look, it says here, But seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. So, if you do that, that's treasure for you. And uh, you will grow in the Lord. That's your treasure and all that. But, you know, what does the Lord want? He wants you to grow in Him. He wants you to become more and more like the Son all the time. Amen. And so, he, that's what He desires. And uh, not just you, but your brothers and sisters of Christ. And, of course, then He wants people to get saved and stay saved. Now, on your screen... We go to the next part, earnestness. Now you gotta be earnest about all this, okay? And this is so absolutely true for everything in our walk with God. So you don't want earthiness, you want excellence and then earnestness. And look at verse 21, which is in yellow. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Okay. So a lot of people have the wrong type of treasure. They got, uh, well, they have rock music as a treasure and sports. I'm not saying you can't watch sports, but this is some people's life, you know. As soon as they check out a church, whatever, they're into something else, and the only time that they really focus upon God might be in church, might be once or twice a day, but the rest of the day, oh, well, the rest of the day belongs to them. They're going to watch this, do that, and so on. Uh, and all, no, you, you your treasure should be that which is godly, which is not going to pass away at all. So, first of all, our greatest treasure is Jesus. Amen? Amen. He is all God, all man. And uh, he is the only way to the Father. The only way to the Father. And so, we want to be earnest here. So, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So, when you get saved... 
And don't forget about what Christ has done for you. A lot of people do this. They think, well, I'm in heaven now. Well, uh, it's good for us to think about where would we be if we were not saved? You know, and I, every now and then I think back, oh, you know, what I went through before I got saved, and you know, where would I be? I'd be probably dead today, like I said so many times before in these videos. But, uh, you know, they think what Christ has done for us, and there's really two main things. And a lot of times people just don't grasp the second thing. But the first one is quite obvious. He died upon the cross. He had all this pain and suffering before he died. He was whipped. He was beaten. His beard was plucked and all that. All these things, and people see that, and they can understand that. But what you and I also need to understand is that whatever sin you and I have committed, that was given to him. And so, therefore, the, the, the worst thing you can think of, I don't know what you could call worse, child molestation? I don't know. Uh, uh, I just saw another picture uh, earlier about the, uh, uh, what they call it now, the time that the Jews were killed in Germany, stuff like that. Uh, the, the words not there at this point, okay? So I need coffee. Huh? Oh, she's my wife says, no, I don't need coffee. All right. <clears throat> All right. But it was during World War II, basically, where the Jews were put in concentration camps and all that. And also, uh, basically, it, it, of course, that was terrible. That was terrible. And so you could, you could have been a Nazi. And there probably have been Nazis that got saved. See, that was terrible what they did to those people. Burn them alive? I saw this picture. They're lined up. They're heading to this, this place where they're going to be burnt alive. I'm thinking, man, if it was, <laughs> why didn't they just bind together and try to, you know, get away from the guards and all that? But there they are. And there they went. They burnt alive. It's a terrible situation. You're, you're in that line and you know that as soon as you get in there, you'll be burnt alive. They're not going to put you to sleep. They'll burn you alive. That's how cruel they were. But let me tell you right now, even the worst Nazi could be saved. If they would truly make Christ a king, repent, say, I'm sorry for being a sinner, and I make Christ my king. I want him in my heart. They could have been saved, and maybe some were. So think about it. Your greatest treasure is Jesus. No matter what sin you committed, by the way, you could say, oh, I wasn't that bad. In the eyes of God, all sin is the same in some respect. So I didn't do these things, okay? All right, it's nice you didn't do these things, okay? But still, we're all sinners, and no matter what the sin was, whether you just had a dirty thought just one time in your life or stole a penny, that's it and all, uh, it's still sin. And that would have sent Christ to the cross. So you should love Jesus equally as Paul did or anybody else. Okay? This is why I don't understand about some Christians. Jesus saved you. So therefore, we should want to live for him and do our best and desire to do something for him, not just sit in church every now and then. And that's it. And as a result, because Jesus died for us and rose again, we should love him so much that we stay spiritually unpolluted. Unpolluted, amen. And so we want to stay unpolluted from sin and uh, stay that way in the Lord, amen. And, of course, we have a passage about that, too. Don't have time to look at those. But, really, there's one, I think, over in Timothy somewhere that says, this is the seal of God. The Lord knows who are his. And they rebel against iniquity. I, I misquoted that. That is a paraphrase. And so, and or something like, or those that are his will depart from iniquity. Depart is like you rebel against iniquity. So, I'll have to look at that up sometime but there is online for you there's a message called uh bear the seal of god and it deals with that verse so you look for that recording but the thing is we don't want to have a divided heart and, and by the way that brings us back up to verses 22 23 okay where jesus says uh, about the light of the body is the eye and all that what do you focus upon? You want, you know, if you're saved, you need, you and I need to be focused, to stay focused upon Jesus Christ and remain in him at all times. And, uh, and just love him so much that no matter what, 
no matter what, you're going to stay with them. So this is how you stay unpolluted, unpolluted. And by the way, uh, of course, we follow the Lord by what's called faith. And our faith is not blind faith. Uh, it doesn't have to be blind faith. But for various reasons, people do follow the Lord. And But we cannot please God without faith. Now, keep in mind, we're bring, about ready to bring up a scripture for you here. Uh, keep in mind that sometimes in God's way, there's only one word, pistis, that may be translated as faith, and it, it also can mean faithfulness. <laughs> so, But let's look now at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Sometime a, a few weeks back, I had spoken with a relative on the phone. But this person, I'm afraid, is not saved. They go to a church, if they go to a church at all. And it's it really it's like Russian Orthodox. I thought, well, they, they might be cool, but no. They're basically the same as Roman Catholic. It's like a system of works, from what I see. And of course, I've been trying to read their doctrine. It's so <laughs> involved at all. But they still have pictures, all sorts of things and all that. And they, it's like a system of works. And she said to me, my faith is just as strong as yours. Well, they can, well that doesn't matter. <laughs> but I didn't say that to her because uh, she was grieving at the time. My faith is just as strong as yours. But the thing is, where is your faith? That's the key. So my faith is not in a religion. My faith is in Jesus Christ who lived, died, and rose again and all. And, and this is the way it should be. And I, my faith is the one who lived, died, and rose again for me. That's where my faith is. And keep in mind, you need to get saved, stay saved. And so I'm talking to everyone out there. If you're not saved, we want you to come to the Lord and make him king of your life and stay saved until he takes you out of this world now there's another thing that's coming down the road probably i hope very soon he's coming back mm. he's coming back we don't know when and so uh, it, it's said in our camp a lot of times that if you're saved you'll be taken in the rapture and all and then christ uh the uh the great tribulation will come and that you know that might be the way it's going to be but the fact is no matter how you look at the scriptures he's coming back he says he's coming back and there's so many things we could bring out for you we have other videos about bible prophecy and all that uh and all but it's it's it, things have been really happening since 1948 the last big thing was when the trump administration came out with the abraham accords that sent you know, like, you know, chills up my spine. Whoa, we're that close. We are that close. And there's more things going on out, out in the Middle East right now. So, look, he's coming back real soon. And note what Jesus says in Revelation 22, verse 12. And behold, I am coming quickly, speedily. And my reward is with me to give everyone according to his work. Now, you're not saved by what you do. You are saved by who you know or who is your Lord. And of course, that's Jesus Christ. What he means here is that if you don't get saved, then you know, there's two levels because there are two aspects of hell. You, get, you, go, you go there automatically because you sin. But then again, there are the cre degrees of punishment in hell. There's, there's a preacher out here that couldn't grasp that, but uh, didn't get a chance to explain it. I think I did, but I can't remember. But so you'll go to hell, and you're, you'll get rewarded there too for what you've done, which is evil. But you get saved not by what you do, but by making Christ your king. And if you make Christ your king, then you get rewards, good rewards and all. And so he, he's going to come back with reward. We don't have time to get into all that. And besides, that's not the most important thing right now. We want to make sure that everyone that watches us, that listens to us, that they're saved, that they're born again, and they are saved, that they are growing in Jesus Christ as their Lord and King. So right now, we ask you that if you're not saved, we want you to come to Jesus Christ to make him King of your life. If so, please pray this prayer. Father, forgive me. I am a sinner. 
I ask Christ's command. I surrender all that I am to him. I give him all. Father, help me, Lord, to lift you, I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. You got to mean that now and all the time, okay? All the time. And if you're saved, stay saved. Hang in there with the Lord and get stronger in him all the time. And seek the, the pure milk of the word, amen. And I would say the, the New King James at least and so on. Things like that. Uh, young literal, pure milk of the word. But if you are saved and, and all, we have a number of lessons for you on the internet coming up called Basic Elements of Christianity at sapphirestreams.com forward slash BEC forward slash all lowercase letters. Take those lessons, they're free. And uh, they're absolutely free. You can take them in any language that Google Translate supports. You just have to take the quizzes in English. And if you are concerned, it might say on your device, it's not secure. Don't worry about that because it is secure. You just have to click that link and it'll let you know we got a security certificate. No hocus pocus there is actually there. And so you just click that link and also, also yeah, it's, it's secure. Also, we have a recording titled Seven Rich for Growth of Christ. That's at my Sapphire Streams page. It's probably here too. At Basic Elements of Christianity, probably in the first lesson. At all, if not on that main page, and but really, it's the, it's at archive.org. You go to archive.org, you type in the word seven and roots for growth of Christ, and then my name is Cinta M A C I N T A, and that should bring it up for you, and you'll have that recording. Amen. So we have all those things for you. Amen. To grow in the Lord, and now the first prayer request. We always use prayer requests at the end right now, and the first one's from Pakistan. The misuse of blasph blasphemy laws to target and persecute Pakistanians Christian communities has escalated in recent years. A Christian couple was recently taken into custody and charged in violation of Pakistan's blasphemy laws and is now awaiting their legal proceedings. While the laws were meant to protect religious se sentiments, they have often been misused to settle personal scores and target minorities. Pray for all unjust charges to be dropped. and Pray for blasphemy laws around the world to be removed. Pray for those wrongfully imprisoned under blasphemy laws to be released. Jesus, I thank you this morning that you do hear us. I thank you that you uh, care for us and that you love us. I just pray for these people in uh, Pakistan who've uh, been wrongfully accused pray that you might uh, protect them, give them courage. I pray also that you might help the, uh, the laws around the world to be reformed so that uh, people would be able to, uh, to worship you freely. And I pray also for, uh, that you might continue helping them to be uh, faithful to you, those that are serving you. These things we ask in your name and for your sake. Amen. Mine is from Burkina Faso, Faso. Femke was married to a village witch doctor for 33 years and was terrorized by demons. You don't think this stuff is it's real. It's absolutely real. And I got moose up here, but it's absolutely positively real. So what happened was, okay, let's read some more here. Let's move that around for you. The spirits would drive her mad and tell her information her husband would use in his fortune telling. When he died suddenly, she sought spiritual freedom. A pastor prayed for her, and she was healed of all demonic oppression. Hallelujah! When she started destroying her husband's valuable occult charms, it enraged her brother-in-law, who threatened to kill her. Femke fled to the capital. Oh, good! I can't pronounce it. Oh, it's the capital of Burkina Faso, where the Christian widows like her have few opportunities to support other than for support other than begging working on road crews or smashing rocks in the gravel by hand. But Femke has hope in Christ. Through her local church, VOM, and the global body of believers, she has received a small new home and a few animals to help provide for needs. And Father, pray for this lady and others that didn't get blessed in this way, but we pray, oh God, that you just lift them up, Father, help them, Lord, to stay true to you. And we pray for those that bless this lady, that you bless them too. But we ask, O oh God, that you undergird her by Holy Spirit and others too like that, whether it be ladies or men, that face situations like this. We pray that you help the Lord to grow in you. And we pray that the oppression 
the persecution stops in these countries. And we pray, Lord, for the relatives of Femke, that they would come to know you as their Savior. And Lord, this we ask in Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you again for watching. And uh, if, once again, if you're in Cambridge, come on out to our service tonight, 7 p.m. at 415 Academy Street, right in Cambridge here in Maryland. And uh, 7 p.m. and then also 7 p.m. this Thursday, we will continue our study in perpendicular truth. We're, right now, we're looking at satisfied but not satisfied. You can understand that. Okay, I hope. It, but that was one of the first ones I ever wrote. But I need to get up there. And so some people understand even more. But we'll talk more about that on this podcast. You look for them being posted at sapphirestreams.com. In the meantime, you have a good day in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. You who dwell in the gardens, the companions, listen to your voice. Let me hear it. Maranatha! 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 Maranatha. Maranatha.